everyone. Welcome to Shannon Sunshine Share on this beautiful Tuesday. Uh, today, um, we are outside of the Lantern of Madison. I'm here with my friend Tar Todd Arganti, right? Yep. Said it right? Uh, from, <laughs> from Ilara Caring Hospice. And I thought it would be a great idea to have a conversation with Todd about hospice. What does it mean? Um, you know, some of the ins and outs. I think that the word hospice is scary sometimes for people. All the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. And over the course of, of uh, my career, so 16 years as a nurse, um, I've had the blessing of working with so many hospice providers, not only in my personal life, but for my patients. And I'm a huge advocate for hospice services. So I kind of wanted to just kind of put out a little bit of education, um, just all about hospice care, um, what you guys do at Alara, um, and things like that so that people have more of an understanding of what that word actually means. Um, so thank you for being here today. Oh, I appreciate the invite. Yeah, absolutely. So I feel, tell I us, feel like a celebrity. You are a celebrity. Right? This is awesome. <laughs> tell awesome. us a little bit about you and tell us a little bit about Alara. Sure. So I, I'm a respiratory therapist by trade. Awesome. You're a nurse by trade. Yep. So it's awesome to collaborate with another clinician in a different fashion. Sure. But at the end of the day, I mean, our, our, our role is really to take care of humanity, whether it's, you know, community members in, in the programs that you do or in the home or wherever they call home. Um, to help them in their journey. So, you know, the role of hospice really is to promote life and living. You know, it, it, the word has a negative connotation to some, not all, but um, it's, it's not all negative, right? So I wish we could change the name, but we can't. Um, but Alara Caring, um, actually we're the fourth largest post-acute provider in the nation. Wow. So we're, we're in Menor on Heisley Road is one of our locations. We have 226 locations nationwide. Oh, wow. From I didn't know how that you guys were that big. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, but uh, 35,000 caregivers in 226 locations. We go from uh, Texas to Massachusetts. Wow. So uh, here we're part of the Midwest region. We're part of a Ohio, Chicago, Illinois team. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've been in, in Menor for about 15 years. Oh, awesome. And, you know, my role is to meet with the good folks like yourself. Um, clinicians, advanced practice practitioners, and mainly family members and, you know, patients sure. who are truly the number one customer for Absolutely. us um, to make sure that they understand what the benefit can truly afford them. Okay. So, yeah, that's a that's little bit about who we are and who I am and awesome. how we approach it. So Awesome. So, like, what, so when we say the word hospice, what is hospice? What's kind of an all-encompassing you know, you said, you know, it's really about the, the health and wellness and, and care of the patient. Um, so hospice is a program that, it, how, like, how much does it cost? Is it covered by insurance? Kind of, you know, what would be, like, your definition of hospice services and how that's covered? Yeah, it's a great question. It's usually the number one question I get, uh, or the number two question. How much is this going to cost me? Yeah. Um, and, you know, people say, geez, you sell hospice. I say, no, I don't sell hospice. I give it away for free. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really one of the, and I use that term a little tongue-in-cheek, but um, the, the Medicare hospice benefit is really one of the, shall I say, nicest programs that the government has put together for folks that need extra support at, um, you know, as they're on their journey towards end of life or not seeking curative care anymore. They're looking for comfort, they're looking for peace in psychosocial, emotional, and clinical support. Um, and, and, and really, it's all encompassed under their Medicare Part A portion of the benefit. Even if you have an HMO plan, it reverts naturally to the Part A benefit. A lot of folks don't know that. Like, oh, I have senior, you know, Anthem Senior Advantage, yeah, United Healthcare that. HMO. It happens behind the scenes. Okay. You know, it just kind of flips. So there's nothing anybody has to do. Um, it's just how we build the service to the provider. Okay. And it's paid out at 100% under that benefit. Okay. Um, and it includes a, a myriad of things. Right. Depending upon the needs of the client. Okay. Um, and so. So we can get into those yeah so too. what what services are covered under the hospice benefit can you give us an idea or some examples yeah absolutely so 
<clears throat> the benefit itself encompasses a wide array of things, right? Um, so from medications that are related to it, admitting diagnosis, um, uh, home medical equipment or durable medical equipment that is there for support, for comfort, for need, um, and just to maintain um, the journey in a positive fashion. So we're talking about a low air loss mattress for better circulation and wound support. Sure. Um, we're talking about oxygen, um, nebulized therapy for breathing. Um, you know, you have peri care items, gloves, pocket supplies, catheter supplies. Those are all kind of scary terms, but things that you know that are important to folks when they're when they're on that path. Sure. And that's all covered. We take care of everything. It's wrapped up into the benefit. Our clinical teams assess for the need. They make, um, they place the orders specifically along with the physicians that are involved. And then they provide it either during their visit or if they're in the home, the product gets to ship directly to the patient or the caregiver or our caregivers bring it depending upon the scenario. Okay. Yeah, so awesome. it, it, it really is a full embodiment of Care. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm amazed at how quickly, you know, that this process can take place. I mean, you know, I've, I've had patients who have, you know, the doctors recommended a hospice consult. I'd, I've had patients who were able to have that initial meeting with hospice and get signed up for the benefit in the same day, yep. have equipment delivered the same day. I mean, I'm amazed at how fast you know, everything goes and how smoothly everything moves. And I know that takes a lot of work behind the scenes and you guys so, do a great job. And we've that. done it on a Saturday for yes, you guys. Yes, absolutely. So Even on the weekend. Yep. So that's amazing. So let's talk a little bit about some of the myths of hospice. So I have had families tell me before that, you know, when they think of hospice, it means like, that's it. You know, I'm going to pass away very soon. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's not the case because I've had patients on and off of hospice services for years. Absolutely. Um, you know, sometimes there's a need for it. Sometimes, you know, we have a change in condition and we're feeling better or, you know, whatever the yep. case may be. So can you talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about, you know, people say, well, is hospice a place? Is hospice a, you know, a service? Yeah. You know, what is it? Yeah, it's uh, all great questions. So. And I hear, I, I get asked those a lot. And it's, you know, part of my role is to make sure when I meet with families or, or caregivers that we, that they have a clear understanding of truly what that means. Yeah. And, you know, the hospice Medicare benefit, it's not a binding contract, first of all. So to your point, folks can sign up for hospice. Um, I had a colleague once that said, you know, the Medicare hospice benefits, the only benefit you can test drive, <laughs> right? You can try it out. If, if you like it, if it works for you, if it's the right decision at that time, great, keep it. As long as you continue to qualify for it, the benefit is there and it's uncapped for episodes. Okay. So the first episode is lumped up in the two 90-day segments that equal six months. Then there's a nurse practitioner visit that we take care of that certifies um, the need again. Mm -hmm. And then there are uncapped episodes, unlimited, I should okay. say, for that. So, in order to, to, to continue to meet the benefit. Okay. Um, is hospice a place? Hospice is wherever care can be provided. So we care for patients in their home, in assisted living communities, independent living, skilled nursing, long-term care facilities. Um, yeah, we, had, we just had a flyby. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, transitional care units, LTACs, okay. ICU, we so can do it's wherever, general inpatient. wherever the patient is, that's where, the, that's where you go. That's yeah, where you the know, they, it's like they say, home is where the heart is. That's right. You know, hospice can be wherever the home is, right, wherever right. they're calling home. So. so I've heard a lot uh, about people, um, you know, people have asked, like, is hospice only for people that have cancer or, like, terminal illness? Um, what can you say to that? Yeah, so it's it, it's not just for cancer patients. Um, in, in fact, you know, I've been doing this going on two years, and the least diagnosis that I've seen has been cancer. Really? It has. Mm. Um, you know, the, the initial qualifying criteria is, you know, you have to have a terminal diagnosis. Um, you have to understand the philosophy that you're no longer seeking curative care or okay. aggressive treatment. And there's some stipulations to that as well. Um, 
And so, you know, that's the initial criteria. So, you know, folks that have underlying lung disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, CHF, um, renal failure really is a big one. Yeah. Um, you know, those are among the, the top that we see. And, and of course, cancer is, is folded in there. Um, so okay. yeah, it's it's not just it's not just a cancer diagnosis. Um, but there's you know there's a lot of different diagnoses that are that okay. are out there. Right? That makes you know? sense. So that makes sense. And so it's really up to you know the physician and the clinical team to determine you know if that patient would qualify as a benefit. Okay. Always. Perfect. And, and, you know, when, and sometimes, unfortunately, folks have multiple comorbidities. Yeah. And it's, you know so then we work with the physician and the patient to find out. All right. So. If they're on multiple medications for one and not for another, does it make sense to go this route? Sure. And would it benefit the client and their, okay. you know, their caregivers if we said, all right, let's we're gonna heart failure is the bigger problem here as sure. opposed to something okay. something else. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So the clinical teams and our medical director determine that. Okay. But it's just it, it becomes a conversation and an opportunity to figure out what the best plan is moving forward okay. so instead of hospice we talk about advanced care planning because that's really what sure, it is sure. we're advancing the care plan forward and making sure that the needs are met okay that makes sense let's talk a little bit about medications i've had patients ask me before hey if my mom qualifies for hospice does that mean that all of her medications get taken away from her um you know i think that you know that that's something that I hear pretty commonly that people you know when they hear hospice they think okay well they're gonna take me off all of my all of my daily medications right. yeah I hear that a lot too and I'm sorry to keep saying that but yeah you know, well that's okay I mean you're, I'm doing, I'm you're doing a great job <laughs> I'm asking great job. the right question yeah you are absolutely and okay. so you know it, it's it's um I get that question a lot and you know our goal is to not strip away what is working for the for the patient Okay. It's a collaboration, again, it's advanced care planning. So how do we advance the care plan forward that makes the most sense? And if they're on medications that really aren't advancing the care plan forward that makes sense, then between the clinical team, the patient, the caregivers, and the physicians, they'll adjust whatever might make the most sense. Sure. Or if they're on two medications and it can be accomplished with one, you know, they'll take that approach. Okay. But, you know, I know I can only speak for our clinical teams and our case managers that go in. They rarely start removing medications okay. um, it, because that sometimes will throw the body into a whole other, you know, spin that we don't want. We want to maintain the best way forward for them and augment what your clinical team is doing. Say, for example, if we have a patient here, um, what your nurse practitioners are doing, what your physicians are doing, not remove everything and take over. It's a collaboration to advance that care plan. Sure, forward. that's great. That's perfect. So, yeah, and I, you know, I try really hard to make sure that I, you know, educate as best I can. Sure. Um, but that's why it's really important that we have partnerships with folks like you because, you know, you guys are able to actually sit down and talk about the specifics um, for what every patient kind of needs and right. what is important to that patient. So that's what I really love about hospice. It's very patient-centered. Um, and they're very involved in the process and, and the decisions that are being made. So. Yeah, and we learn from each other, right? Yeah. So, you know, the collaboration that your team has here and the collaboration that we would bring to the table or, or any hospice, um, then at the end of the day is patient's focus. Right, absolutely. So I love it, I love it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, so what I see a lot of times, especially with folks that have um, a neurocognitive diagnosis or like dementia um, what happens when they stop kind of desiring to eat or drink what happens at that point is that a, a point where maybe it might be appropriate for a hospice consult yeah so dementia and Alzheimer's is can be a little bit difficult from time to time as, as you well know um, you know part of the advancement of that progression can come to that, right? Yeah. They no longer want to eat or drink or remember how to eat or drink. Um, and, and at that point, you know, part of the hospice philosophy, I think is a good time to, to interject for a couple different reasons. A, being the fact that, you know, 
we don't prolong or hasten death. Our job is to maintain the journey and, and, and make sure that the goals are met during that journey. So the body itself, you know, the philosophy bound hospice is, you know, allowing the body to progress in a fashion that it is wanting to. Sure. So we don't hasten or prolong that process. Okay. We make sure that that process for the individual and for the caregivers are as comfortable as possible. Perfect. So, so I talk to families all the time, you know, mom, dad, they're not eating, drinking, they only eat a tablespoon, they don't want to be, and they want to force feed them. And as you know, being a nurse, sometimes that can be the worst thing to try to do. Yeah. Um, in, you know, but that's an emotional, you know, it's hard to watch. It is hard, it's hard to, to watch. see because, Very as, much. you know, as humans, right, I mean, we're just talking. You got a great taco salad for lunch. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I ate something for lunch I shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> But, you know, the, we like to eat, right? Yeah. And so when we see that, you know, I'm Italian, right? Come on, come on, you got to eat. So, um, you know, that's hard for us. But, you know, the other portion that we bring in when it comes to hospice is a medical social worker, right? Okay. So that emotional and psychosocial support is there, not only for the client, but also the family. Yeah. And so, you know, they spend their time working through those types of scenarios our clinical team through education with the families as well and you know we see that when wounds happen as well um, and you know somebody always wants to blame somebody for why the wound isn't getting any better and right. it's it's part of the body decomposition it sounds bad um, and it's not easy to watch especially if it's a loved one or even if you're a clinician taking care of it um, it's a tough scenario yeah. um, you know but part of Part of that, again, is supporting and making sure they're comfortable, they're positioned, they have the right support surface to help that journey. Sure, yeah. sure, perfect. But yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't have said it, any of that better myself. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you were able to be here today to kind of help, you know, bridge the gap on some of the questions yeah, and maybe sure. the things that are floating around out there that, you know, some of those misconceptions. So you gave me some really great information today. Um, so how can people get this information and how can they get a hold of you at Alara or just get some more general information about the services that you provide? Sure, the, the easiest way is you can always contact Shannon. She mm -hmm. has our information as well. But the easiest way, if you go on alara.com, E-L-A-R-A.com, you know, there's links to all of our locations. They can research who we are. Um, they can look us up on CMS. So there's a governmental website, right, um, uh, medicare.gov. They rate the hospices, and so we're on there. We're nationally ranked, awesome. really kind of second to none, especially in our region. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. probably the easiest way to get it started. Perfect. Well, I can say that all of the interactions with your staff have been amazing. Um, oh, I appreciate you know, they're that. in our building taking care of our clients, um, and they're just very passionate, very educated, um, very calming presence and just you know it's been an overall great experience for us Wonderful. for our families and our clients so i want to thank you for that thank you and Appreciate thank that. you so much for being here with us today perfect Appreciate and that. i will look forward to seeing you all next week thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day bye, bye.